So today we're talking about a class called numerical methods. What is numerical methods? Let's take a look. So in mathematics or in physics, when you're doing different problems, usually in textbooks or you know in class, you'll see problems which are pretty easy to like crank up an answer for. You might do a couple of lines of algebra and then you can get out the answer right away. But sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes you have problems which are just really hard to solve or get an exact new um, exact analytical answers out. So what do you do in these cases? Sometimes you still want an answer, but you just can't get out like an exact solution for it. What you can do is you can find the numerical answer to the solution rather than finding the analytical solution to the answer. Basically, you can just like get out the actual numbers for what the answers might be rather than leaving it in terms of like y equals to x plus something and something and etc. And this is basically what numerical methods is. It is basically finding techniques that you can find answers to difficult equations numerically. And as I mentioned, it's a pretty important class because sometimes in real life, you need answers. You want answers. We humans want answers. But sometimes it's hard to find answers. So we have to approximate these answers. What sort of things can we approximate? Well, there's many things. We can, for example, solve different equations. If we want to find the answers to an equation, we can solve them numerically. Or we can do things like calculus and we can, for example, integrate or differentiate numerically. Uh, or we might, for example, want to simulate something or find an optimal answer to something. And those can be done by approximation as well, by finding it like an, an optimal solution through like, you know, experimenting or simulating things or like finding them out numerically, things like those. So how would like it look like to maybe like approximate something or get an approximate solution to something? Well, let me give you an example. Let's consider the case of uh, numerically differentiating a function. Well, what is differentiation? Well, you have a function, maybe you have f of x, and then you want to find what its derivative is. What is x prime of x? Uh, hopefully, I, my viewers know what derivatives are. Otherwise, uh, this will be a bit difficult. So, first of all, what is the definition of a derivative? Well, we know that f prime of x will be equal to the limit as let's pick a variable h approaches 0 of x of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h like so right so that's basically the definition of differentiation well what if now i have a function which i cannot compute this limit well analytically maybe i have something weird like f of x equals to e to the power of sine of x uh, multiplied to e to the power of cosine of x, something like that, something really complicated. I don't know, that, that's, that's probably still solvable. Uh, I, I'm just too lazy to solve it. But if we have like some weird function like that, how can I use this definition to get out like its derivative numerically? Well, one way we can do it is we can expect what the limit actually means. Well, the intuition of the limit is that h approaches zero. It gets closer and closer to zero, right? So maybe what we can do is we can just, you know, pick an h, pick a really small number of h, one that gets really close to zero, and then just simply work out what this fraction is. So maybe we can say h equals two, 10 to the power of minus six, and then f of x, f prime of x will just be equal to f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, for h equals to that small number. I mean, yeah, okay, so the equation is right, but why does it work intuitively? Well, you can think back to like what like derivatives and limits sort of is, right? How do I work out what the derivative of the function at this position look like? Right? If this is this point is x, this is f of x, how do I work out the derivative here? Well, I can draw a line really close, right, at x plus h. And then that will just be f of x plus h there. And so the idea of the limit, right, is you move that point closer and closer to x, right? That's what the limit is. That's how you get like the uh, differentiation, like definition of the derivative. But if you want to approximate it, maybe you can just move h in like 
you know, like maybe, for example, as I said, like h to be close enough to x, maybe like 10 to the minus 6. Move h to be close enough to x and then actually work out what this slope is, basically. And you can work out what that slope is because it is like rise over run. The rise is just f of x plus h minus f of x. And the run would just be x plus h minus x, which is just going to be h. And so like that's where like how you could sort of numerically differentiate, or at least that's the idea of why you can do so. Well, this is a pretty good approximation of like what f prime or what the derivative of f is, but exactly how good is it? Well, one way you can take a look is we can maybe use something called a Taylor series. Taylor series is an infinite sum and it's basically, you know, a way we can say like, what is a function of x for really a value really close to another value. So uh, Taylor series sort of looks like that. Uh, you can you can go check out like a more detailed explanation of it, but I'm um, too lazy to really write that down. But we can try to expand out what this term is, right? So uh, just so we can see like how good of an accurate, uh, how good of an approximation we have. So what does this equal to? This equals to one over h. Now we can, we can expand f of x plus h as a Taylor series, right? Uh, I'm gonna write minus f of x in front here. I'm gonna write this term in front here because it will get a bit messy here. Uh, this will equal to, well, the ex Taylor expansion of, let me write, of this bit will be equal to f of x plus h of f prime of x plus h squared 2 of f double prime of x, or the second derivative, uh, plus h cubed to the 6 f triple prime of x plus other future terms there. Uh, we, can, uh, we can simplify a couple of things so that cancels out. Uh, then we have f prime of x plus h to the 2 f double prime of x plus h squared 6 f triple prime of x plus and so on. So as we can see, this is what we actually want. This is the derivative f as we want. But then we have all these other terms back here as well. So this is sort of the error of our approximation. Uh, if like, for example, h is about 10 to the minus six, the error will be in the scale of 10 to the minus six, right? Uh, and that's not good because we want to approximate and get a really close value. Uh, and that's not really that good because we have all these errors back here. Can we do better? The answer is, yeah, we can do a lot better. Uh, or not a lot better, but, but we can do better. And so how can we do better? Well, here we can see that the limit is, well, as h approaches zero, but you can remember that h approaches zero from two different ways, right? It can approach from the front and it can also approach from the back, right? Uh, so maybe uh, we can consider the value from both sides. So if you imagine a curve like that. This is x, this is x plus h. So far what we're doing is we're finding that curve there, but maybe we can pick another one. Maybe we can pick x minus h, and then we can find that line there, right? So rather than just finding, you know, the derivative based on one point and the other, we can find like sort of neighboring points and then find that curve instead. And so what is the slope of that line? So let's redraw that picture out here a bit, a bit further. So we have x, we have x plus h, we have x minus h. What is the slope of this line? This point here is f of x plus h. This is the function of x minus h, right? And this width is 2h. And so we can, well, find the derivative. We can approximate the derivative using our second method to be equal or roughly equal to uh, f of x plus h divide, minus f of x minus h divided by 2h because this is 2h. Now again, maybe we can let h equals to some small number, 10 to the minus six, the closer the better, right? But how close is this approximation? Well, let's consider it, right? Well, again, we're gonna do something very similar to what we did up here. So f of x, right, is equal to nothing above there. 
now we can do the Taylor expansion again. Uh, 1 over 2h at the front there instead. Now, we can do a very similar expansion again. We can consider the first term. The first term would just be uh, f of x plus h of f prime minus x plus h squared 2 f double prime x plus h cubed 6 f triple prime x plus etc minus uh, f of x. We have to be a bit careful with the signs here because uh, in this case it's not plus h, it's minus h. So this h becomes minus h f prime x plus h squared, but if it's minus h squared and times minus h squared, it's just plus h squared, so h squared 2 f prime of x plus h3, actually minus h3, 6 f triple prime of x plus all the other numbers. So these two cancels out and we're going to be left with, and actually these two things also cancel out. And then what we're going to be left with will be you can sort of see that like there's two of these so that will sort of cancel out so we get f prime of x plus h cubed divided by 3 actually it'll be h squared divided by 3 no it won't be h squared divided by 3 i cannot do maths anymore it will be h squared divided by 12 because 2 times 6 uh no but then that too cancels out okay uh technicality uh it will be equal to f prime x plus h squared divided by 6 uh, of f triple prime of x plus other numbers. And so you can see that this is much better than this because here it depends on h to the first power. But here it depends on h to the second power, right? And so this is a lot better because if we let h equal to 10 minus 6, then our error will be in the scale or in, in the magnitude of 10 to the minus 12. And that's a lot smaller. And we still get the right answer, which means that using this formula is a much better approximation than this formula here. So, you know, that's just a simple way we can approximate things, right? It's, it's, it's wonderful. Thumbs up, triple thumb, double thumbs up. I can't, I don't have three thumbs. I can't do triple, triple thumbs up. So basically that's like one of the big ideas of numerical methods. Like how can we solve a problem that is really hard to solve mathematically and get a reasonably good accuracy for it. So things like those. And uh, yeah, basically that is it for, uh, for this class. And uh, I mean, I, I still get to use a lot of the contents in this class in other areas as well especially as i said because sometimes because we humans crave answers and so do my professors so uh, sometimes i have to give like numerical integration for them or something like that when i'm too lazy to work it out by hand uh, but basically that's it that is uh that is it for numerical methods today um thank you very much for watching this video and tomorrow i'm going to be talking about a class in computer science that a lot of people at my university at least is going to hate